Hey folks, so I'm not sure about for you, but I know for myself, the last few years have been challenging. There's been a ton and a ton of uncertainty, lots and lots of pressures, and just a whole lot of kind of like sensory and stimulus overload and overwhelm. And fortunately, I know that many moons ago, I discovered gardening as a means to kind of soothe and calm my nervous system and benefit my mental health and mental well-being. And so what I want to walk through today are five mindful gardening techniques to incorporate and include in your garden plan for the season ahead. So as we get started here, if you have any questions at any point, please leave those down in the comments. I answer each and every one of them and we'll get a response over to you very, very quickly. And so as we begin thinking about mindful gardening and these five techniques, it's important to understand kind of like what is mindfulness and at its kind of most simple and purest form, it is the process of coming fully into the present moment and being fully engaged and immersed in that present moment. And this is one of the really cool things about gardening is that because of how it is set up, it is an amazing canvas to be practicing mindfulness and to be coming into that present moment. So the first mindful gardening technique to incorporate into your garden plan for this season is listening and simply to listen to as many sounds as you can hear. So when I start one of my gardening sessions, when I'm going to be getting my hands dirty, one thing that I absolutely love to do is just sit on my back stairs for a couple minutes and count how many unique sounds can I hear. And what I find happens is that I was totally unaware aware of all of the little subtleties that were happening because I was just so quickly moving through life and all the different things that I might have had going on leading into that gardening session. So by slowing down and intentionally listening to each of the sounds that I can hear around me, it really brings me into that present moment. It starts with just the car going down the road, maybe the neighbor's kids playing in their front yard. But as I take a couple of deep breaths and slow down, I start to hear those more subtle sounds, such as the river a couple of blocks away, gently flowing, or the wind just kind of whispering through the trees up above me and through the plants throughout the yard. And what I find is that just after a couple minutes of that, I'm already much more calm, much more at peace and sinking into that gardening session. So the second mindful gardening technique to incorporate into your garden plan is touch and activating our sense of touch. And this is once again where the garden is such an incredible canvas for this because there is so much that we can be touching and coming into that fully immersed moment in the garden. And so whether that is running your hands through the soil or whether it is inspecting some of the leaves on your plant, really try to be fully immersed in that moment. And so one thing that I'm going to be doing with my gardening plan for this coming season of 2022 is that I'm going to be building kind of a barefoot path where every 15 feet it's going to be a different texture so that as you walk along it each of those 15 feet maybe the first 15 is bark mulch but then as you transition to the next 15 feet of say moss it's a very clear and accurate circuit break or pattern break that pulls you once again back into that present moment and being fully immersed in the garden so for the second technique there find ways that you can incorporate touch into your garden plan for this season okay so the third mindful gardening technique is scent and activating our sense of scent or smell in order to become fully present and immersed in our gardening time. And so the garden, once again, is an amazing, amazing canvas with so many different things that have beautiful, incredible fragrances and scents to them. And so one thing that I'm gonna be doing this year is planting a couple of just, you know, of my favorite scented plants. So that includes rosemary. I'm not sure if you've ever kind of gotten your face right into a rosemary plant, but it's super, super nice. Lavender in the same family. And then sweet peas as well. I've really, really loved and enjoyed. And my encouragement to you, if you don't necessarily know which plants it is that you love, or if you don't have the seeds to start them, is to wait just a little bit until March or April and leave a little bit of space in your garden plant. And then as we get into March or April, head over to one of your nurseries on a weekend afternoon and spend a little bit of time just aimlessly walking throughout and burying your face in some of those plants to find out which scents do you love the most and then purchase those seedlings for this first year of mindful gardening and then if you really enjoy them over the course of the season at that point you could start the seeds for the coming season all right so before we get to the fourth and fifth techniques for those of you that might be new to the channel here that i haven't met before i'm jordan from mind and soil where we're looking to introduce a million individuals to mindful gardening so if you're looking to feel more peacefulness more calmness 
more restoration in your life, then I really encourage you to subscribe to the channel because we put out new videos each and every week to help you be feeling more comfortable, more confident in the garden, getting your hands dirty, and therefore more quickly tapping into just how amazing gardening feels. So with that being said, let's dive into that fourth mindful gardening technique, which is your sense of sight. And this is once again, where there's no shortage of things to be looking at throughout the garden, but that can actually almost be a bit of a challenge. And so my encouragement to you is rather than just kind of observing the garden is to get laser focused and zoom in on one very specific plant and really study it, really get to know it. So take a look at the soil that it's going into, at the stem that's coming out of the soil, at the different kind of grooves and veins throughout the leaves that are on that plant. If there's flowers on there, if they're wilting over a little bit, if they're standing up nice and tall, really observe all of the intricacies of the plant there to once again come into that present moment. And as you do this, you'll probably also start to notice some subtleties of the plant or even potentially some little critters and pests. And this becomes one of the best pest management techniques. It really, really quickly and early observing anything that might be going on. So the fourth technique there is using your sense of sight to come into that present moment and forget of anything else that might be going on in life at the moment there. And so with that said, let's get into our fifth and final technique. And that is the one and only sense of taste. So the fifth mindful gardening technique is to use your sense of taste to come into that present moment. And once again, lots of really, really amazing things that you can be tasting and um, trying out throughout the garden there. And probably also some ones that you're going to want to stay away from. But when we think about it from a garden planning perspective, one thing that I absolutely love to do is have a good number of plants you can harvest on an ongoing basis, opposed to harvesting all at once. So rather than having just tons of say cabbage or broccoli throughout my garden, I'll do something more like cherry tomatoes or kale or arugula. And these are all plants that are gonna be yielding for months and months throughout the season. So as you get into your gardening session and you've walked around, you've listened to the sounds, you've inspected some plants, you can now also be kind of just tasting the different flavors throughout the garden at many, many points throughout the season opposed to having those big one-time harvests. So from a garden planning perspective, consider adding in some plants that are more of your grazing plants opposed to the one-time harvest. So folks, that's everything that I wanted to cover off on for today. I really hope this has been helpful and helped you find new ways to incorporate mindfulness into your gardening to feel just how calming, how soothing, and how restorative it is. As mentioned, if you have any questions, please leave those down in the comments below because I'll answer each and every one of them. And that's all for right now, so I can't wait to catch you on the next one. Go get those hands dirty and I'll see you soon.